What's your name and where are you from? That was good, everybody. I go by the name of Harlem Vall Green, you feel me? From New York raised, coming out of Miami with this music shit. Out here in the A right now, Wesley. Shit, we out here. Hey, what's up? How you doing, bro? Doing good, you feel me? Okay. Enjoying the weather out here for this weekend. Mm. It's getting to it, you feel me? So you, you said you were out here from Miami, but you're from New York? Yeah, born and raised, Harlem, Sugar Hill. What uh, was life like growing up in Harlem? Shit. Everywhere you go, there's always a good and a bad for For real? I've been to many, many places and it's just like growing up in New York and Harlem specifically, it's like a fast lifestyle. Like you grow up quick out there. Mm -hmm. Hey, you feel me? And growing up in the hood and all that, you grow up quick anywhere, but over there it's just like it's very, very fast. Like mm -hmm. it's a way different lifestyle. I've been to many places everywhere and it's just it's completely different. Yeah, y'all be riding the train when y'all like five years old. By yeah, <laughs> everything is all about. Yeah. Feel me? Mm -hmm. And so, did you start making music out in Harlem, or like how did how did your creative? I mean, ever since I was like a kid, before I had left, I was always you know rapping, writing, ah uh, ah. Uh, but I ain't never really started taking music serious till I came out to Florida, and it was around like when I was like 18, 19. Mm. When I really, you feel me, started hitting the studio, I, I, and I told myself, I'm like, I bet I want to start rapping, see, see what's up with it, see where it go. Mm. Feel me? Now we here. Do you, um, do you come from an artistic family or a creative family? Nah, nah. Really? I mean, I ain't gonna lie. My pop, my brother was a DJ. My pops was a DJ. Mm. So I guess somehow music was always involved in my life somehow, one way or another. But. As far as like artistic and all that other stuff, nah, not really. Mm -hmm. But music, I could say, if you want to consider that, I mean, it is art, but you know, as far as that, that's about it. Yeah. Other than that ain't nothing much. So who got you into music when you went to Miami? Was it like your father? Nah, when I went out there to Miami, I was always, I always been into music ever since, you feel me, a little kid, but mm -hmm. it, was, it was myself. I was just like, you know what? Like, I just felt like I was sleeping on what I knew I had. I mean, or have, I could possibly lead up to and, you know, grow. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just started doing it and I was like, you know what, fuck it, I'm out here. Like, mm -hmm. I done done a lot of half, more than half the shit these rappers be motherfucking lying about. Feel so, I me, mean, I ain't glorifying it. Shit, it's part of everybody's journey. Mm -hmm. But, you know, shit, it, it made me who I am today, you get me? Yeah. And so what made you, I'm gonna rewind a little bit, what made you move from, uh, from New York to Miami? Shit. I ain't even really have a choice, you feel me? It's just, when I was living in New York and shit, I was just getting into trouble, all that. My mom and my pops had split. You know how that shit go. Literally came home one day and my mom dad told me, yo, pack up all your shit in Spanish, cause she ain't speak no English, recipes to her. She dad really? told me, yo, pick up your shit. We going to Miami tomorrow. I ain't even coming on a plane. I came to Miami on a Greyhound, but it's the Cuban version. It's called La, La Cubana. You feel me? <laughs> wait, wait, so the, the Cubans got their own Greyhound? Huh? Yeah. Oh, it's literally yeah. called La Cubana. It should take you to Cali, Texas, fucking take you to like, I think the Central America and Mexico. Damn, that's fire. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And yeah, the next thing you know, two days later, it was October 28th, the day I left. October 30th, I was in Miami. Sunday oh, morning, such as down at 10, 10 a.m. Wait, so you didn't get to see your dad before you, before you? Nah, I ain't get to see nobody, none of that. Literally, like, I was hanging out with who I was hanging out with that day. I was literally at school, you feel me? I, I changed up when I, what I did, came home like at 11, I was like 14. And then my mom literally said, yo, but the house was already halfway gone. I put this on everything, like, I, ain't no cap. Everything was already halfway gone and I just went and packed up the rest of my shit and then I just came out here to Miami and I was staying with my auntie and my uncle oh, for about two years. Do you yeah. know why the, the move was so fast like that? Like, You feel me? New York was getting expensive, you feel me? Just the lifestyle, it was just... My mom just wasn't fucking with it and she was just like, you know, we're taking our asses out of here and then you feel me, landed in Florida. She was just yeah. doing it for what was for the better, you get me? Yeah, and so what was Florida like when you, like, you first touched down? When you, what you, were you 15? Yeah. What was it like? Shit, hot as fuck, for sure. Hotter than a motherfucker. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, it was just weird and it was new. I ain't really want to fuck with nobody because it was just like, damn, like, 
I don't, I just fucking, I ain't even have no choice. I just came out here like on some sudden shit, so you feel me? But I had to get accustomed and you know, I had a couple cousins out there and shit. And you know, it was straight at first, it was cool. Completely different though, from mm -hmm. when I first moved out here. Mm -hmm. Not talking about now, cause Miami's completely different from when I moved out there now. Right. So, you know, <clears throat> it was, it was way different change. Yeah. I, I ain't gonna lie, one thing I could say though is that in Miami, I felt like I, I, I felt my culture more and shit. Cause like in New York, mm -hmm. it's like Dominican, Puerto Rican, Black, African, Asian. Mm -hmm. But like you literally go to Miami, it's literally like a fucking Latin America, fucking from all walks of life and in Spanish, like Caribbean, Real? everything. Like Damn. that shit, that shit is different. Like it's really, really diverse. Really, really diverse. I ain't gonna lie. And so your your um, your family is from yeah. Nicaragua. Or? Yeah. Okay. Both my yeah, both my people from Nicaragua. You feel me? Shout out the motherland. You already know Central America and this bitch. Yeah. Do you uh, do you ever go back? I mean, I've only been there twice. I went there when I was ten, when my grandma died, and then when I was eleven, I pulled up next year. Felt like you know, Central Americans and shit. They really into like either Christianity or Catholic. My bad. Catholic. It's all good. Being Catholic and shit. Yeah. So, you know, I just pulled up after that for like a yearly match for like the day she passed and then I haven't been back since. Gotta go back soon though. Yeah, thanks. Um, so, all right, so you moved to, you have an abrupt move from New York to, to Miami, right? And you, then earlier you said that you started making music because you felt like it was like just something that you had to show people that you could do, right? Type shit. Like I always was doing music, but it's like, I'll show that shit to my people. They're like, bro, like you could really rap. And then it was just like, one time my, my homeboy was, matter of fact, this is how exactly how it happened. Like one time my homeboy, I was rapping, shout out Frankie, you feel me? Frankie J305, he was out there in the studio. And I had made a song and I had showed him, but I wasn't planning on actually going to the studio with it. Like it was just a freestyle I just wrote down. Cause like I said, I was writing, filming freestyling, uh -uh. and then they was like, yo, bro, make this into a song. And then they're like, yo, bro, if you're not going to get the extra hour then you know, give me the money and I'm going to do it and I'm going to just pay you back later. One of our other mans, I'm like, you know what, fuck it, let me jump in that shit. I did it. Dropped it, motherfuckers was fucking with it, and then ever since, you feel me, I just been doing music. Shit ain't been easy though, it been a lot. Mm -hmm. Come with this shit, a lot of money lost, a lot of people lost, whole lot of other shit, you feel me, but yeah. like my nigga Nipsey said, life is a marathon, not a sprint, you feel me? Yeah. It's gonna take time, you just gotta really put in that work. What do you think is the most like difficult thing that you've experienced in the music industry? That's a good question. Um, one thing I could say in the music industry is like, kind of like the music industry is kind of like the streets, but it's like, <clears throat> it's way slimier in a way. I don't know how to explain it. It's like, you gotta really watch out like who you fuck with, who you doing business with. Like you never really know. Like it's just, it's just real different. Yeah. It's very like, open it's a lot of shit a lot of shit mm -hmm. weird shit good shit bad shit like yeah it's like no other business but yeah i always tell people that about like, like music literally business, like like <laughs> <laughs> like for real bro like it's just it's just fucking the big ass fucking roller coaster ride yeah but depending on how you take it you feel me is it good or bad or is it all right i make you want to jump off that shit like you feel me? I don't know. I don't let that go over your head. Like, <laughs> did you? Um, are you signed to a label right now? Uh, currently, yeah. I just got to deal with my manager. Shout out PMR. You feel me? Paper Music Records. You feel me? Yeah, I am. Um, I did have a distribution deal in 2021 with a record label called Bentley Records. They're like an international record label for like all types of genres and shit. But yeah, other than that, I'm just, I just got a management deal, you feel me? I'm under Paper Music Records, shout out Fatty, you already know, Thali, Black, everybody, you already yeah. know. And so what made you choose to sign a deal? Like, how do you feel about like being independent as an artist? Well, because in reality, my manager, he my producer. And you know, like, the way the contract 
set up all that, like, it just worked both in our favor. Like, that's why I said it's more like a distribution deal than mm -hmm. actually me signing, because I'm still free to do whatever the fuck I want. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm under paper music records. Mm -hmm. You get me? And they done put me in some rooms, connected me with some people that I, <laughs> motherfuckers that I first thought, I was like, I need to get somehow next to them if I'm doing this music shit. And somehow, some way, even if they don't know me or know that I do music, I was somehow in there. Like, yeah. you get me? It's like, Speaking that shit into existence, existence some way, you know, somehow, you feel me? Yeah. How do, um, do your parents know about your, like, music career? How does your family feel about it? Shit. My family and shit, they just told me, like, you know, whatever it is I do, just make sure I'm doing the right move. My pops, you feel me, he, <clears throat> he rocking with it, he know I'm smart. And, you know, like, shit, my mom, shit, I ain't gonna lie, she used to, she used to really fuck with my music though, like not no funny shit, like she really did. I ain't gonna lie. She felt my shit, even though she didn't really understand English, she understood like what I was saying, heard the rhythm, like, you know, she was really fucking with that shit. Yeah. And I knew in her, she would have dead told me if my shit was buzz. You heard me? <laughs> facts. Like, nah, no funny shit. Nah, facts. So what would you say is like your ultimate like goal with your rapping? Shit, the ultimate goal with this rap shit is, you feel me, I want to make myself, like, motherfucking legacy, like, stamp yeah. myself, let it be known, like, I was out here really known, but, you know, at some point, I look at it like it's business, you feel me, I want to expand just, other than just the rap, expand to a whole bunch of other stuff, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Just get this money, you feel me, set up that wealth, yeah. financial freedom. What, what is it like that shit? Andrew Tate says, yeah, got out the Matrix. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like that. Right. That's what I'm trying to get out the fucking yeah. Matrix, bro. But on some real, not that Instagram money type shit on that. Like, yeah. I got it. Don't worry. We good. Type shit. You get me? Mm -hmm. One way or another. Fuck it. We're for over the music. So would you, would you sign a major label deal? To be honest, I would. <clears throat> but the... Like, I know, I already know how this goes, and I'm not, you feel me? I could read shit. The terms would have to be really, really good, or somehow. Yeah. I, would, I would be open more to signing a distribution deal with labels than actually signing to a label. Right. Are you feel me? No, I feel that. But I mean, shit, if the bag right and the terms is looking right, mm -hmm. shit, why not? Look at both feet. Do you, you remember know? the first song you put out? Yeah. Do you still like it now or? Uh, that what? Do you still, do you like it now? Or like, how do you feel about that song? I mean, I still like it now. Sometimes when I listen to it, it makes me smile, but it's like, I, I don't progress so much, you feel me? Yeah. But <clears throat> yeah, that first song, I ain't gonna lie. It was actually like a freestyle. It was, um, what was the name of that song by Future? It's called Married to the Money, Married to the Game. Yeah. That was literally the first song I put out. I did a freestyle on that bin, threw that bitch on the SoundCloud. Mm. Actually, I ain't gonna lie. Matter of fact, now that I remember, actually, I did drop a song when I was like 15, but that was just on some bullshit. I just remembered, you feel me? Mm. On some like, motherfuckers recorded that shit through um, uh, the, Apple, I, the Apple fucking headphones with, with, with the string and all. Like, he plugged it into the computer and I was rapping on the little button up button down on the pod shit in the middle you feel me yeah. and it was um it was a freestyle too but it was uh damn what was the name of that song it was by i don't know if you know who immortal technique is he yeah, from like bro. Yeah, yeah you feel me that's real harlem shit east side shit um i forgot what fucking song it is damn i can't remember but it's one of like his if any, I think it's like his top five best songs mm. and i had did a freestyle to that shit and i dropped that shit but you know that shit was that shit I, uh, the, the rhymes and shit was it, but I was ass, you feel me, at that, at that time, because yeah. that, that shit was different. I fuck around, slide on that shit now, but you know, yeah, that was the first song I ever dropped. But the first song that I ever dropped when I really, like, said I'm going to do this music shit was Married to the Money, that freestyle at first. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so after you, after you dropped that first song, you've had, like, uh... How, how long has your career been so far? Like, how, when would you say you started? I ain't gonna lie, like, I dropped the first song when I was, like, 18. 
But I like when I really said I I'm gonna really like start 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 this shit. That's why I say it was when I was like 19. So I guess you could say like five years now. About to be five, five to six in between somewhere around there. What's the most important thing that you've learned in that time? Because I feel like you're moving from sort of like a newcomer to fairly like establishing yourself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, you just you gotta be consistent. You can't let you can't listen to people like. It taught me like whatever you put your mind to and really like whatever you put in, you gonna put out. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And that's exactly why like the shit, it's been a lot of ups and downs with this music shit, but now is when I'm really about to start dropping shit like for real, for real, really yeah. try to make some shit shake and start making money off this rap shit for real, you get me? All that. So what's happening in your, you mentioned that before earlier, so like what's happening right now to where you feel like it's such a pressing need to make the rap happen like right now? Cause bro, it's just been a lot of trials and tribulations, you feel me? Just a lot of shit I've been through, a lot of fuck shit, a lot of personal shit. Like it's just a lot of distractions, a lot of money laws. Like you know, it's it ain't even about the rap shit. It's about like just life. You feel me? That's why I haven't been able to be as consistent as I ever could. I haven't even been able to be as consistent as I should be. You feel me? So I gotta really see how that's gonna go. Cause you feel me, from the looks of it, shit was doing better than a lot of people and a lot of things, you feel me? But it's just, I never been able to go 100%, like, yeah. go drop like four or five songs in a month, like on some crazy shit, like, you hear me? Mm -hmm. That's the type of shit I gotta get on, like. Mm. For someone watching this, who aspires to do what you do, what advice would you have for them? Get your bag right. Believe in yourself and just keep working on your craft. You feel me? But most importantly, get that bag and don't listen to nobody. And just always, you feel me, you gotta stay consistent. This shit really awesome what you put in, put out shit. But rap game has changed compared to like how it was years ago. Like everything is now completely different. Everything has changed. Point blank after COVID, to be honest with you. That's how I feel. Everything after COVID just changed. Somehow, better, worse, just everything. Everything, anything. Thank you. No problem.